Stephen, we've spent the last 45 minutes going deep into these financial plans. So let's get to the, to the really important things, the lightning round. We want to tell these people exactly what they should be doing and how to go about it. So the first one I got for you is what is recovery going to mean to most people? Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I think recovery for the majority of Americans is just going to be getting back to where they were, right? They, they've been put into the situation where many of them live paycheck to paycheck and now that's gone away. And so their, their personal debt situation, uh, their ability to provide for themselves and be self-sustaining has had its legs cut out from under it. So I think the first thing is going to be, number one, get back to where you were as quickly as possible. But I don't like to leave people there, right? Uh, from there, people are going to have to have new skill sets in order to move forward in the new economy. So you, you're going to have to learn technology like this for video conferencing. You're going to have to understand the, the World Wide Web better. But there's also a lot of people on my channel that I think could make significantly more money than they were making even before this. But they're going to have to start looking at jobs that they've maybe never considered. And I, I know you know this, but you know I was fortunate enough to meet Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. And he's a big proponent of these jobs that people don't want to do, but that pay anywhere from fifty to $100,000. So I'll give you an example. Uh, a cousin of mine, he's uh, 19. He was working flipping burgers. And then he was kind of debating, should I go to college? What should I do? And he enrolled in this welding program. And he now makes 90000 a year welding, right? So there, there's, but before the coronavirus shutdown, most people don't know this, but there was over 2 million jobs paying 50,000 or more that people were not filling simply because I think they didn't know about it. Or we've been so programmed to do these white collar jobs being in an office. But right now recovery is going to mean, in my opinion, finding opportunity and then bringing your passion to that opportunity where a lot of younger people and even older people, they're starting to get brainwashed into do what you're passionate about and uh, the money will come. Well, I, I've not found that to be true with the majority of people, even myself. I had to find opportunity. And then, of course, I bring my passion anywhere I go. But I think that's what recovery is going to look like is, uh, you know, getting back to where you were and then getting ahead. Mm. Mm, man, that's, that's, that's great insight. Okay. So here's number two. So is more stimulus money the answer to most Americans' um, issues right now? Uh, I believe that more stimulus is the answer. Here's the reason why. Most people don't realize that if, if I get a $1,200 check, when I spend that, that $1,200 doesn't disappear, right? It goes to maybe 40 or 50 different businesses that then collect money and then they turn around and turn that over to employees who then go out and put that money to work in 15 to 50 different places, right? So that money cycles around and around and around and uh, it, it ends up benefiting the economy something like four or five times over. And so I do think that that is going to be huge for jumpstarting the economy, getting jobs going again. But also, like I said in my first response, uh, people are now behind the eight ball. They are at a deficit. So they need a lump sum of money to help them get back to that recovery or that break even where they were at before so that they can then move forward. So yes, I do believe that uh, stimulus for the people is good. I, I don't like all this wasteful spending in the HEROES Act, but I, I believe that hopefully Senate will move quickly. I'm really praying they move quickly. If it were up to me, they would pass a bill for the people right now, and then they would strategically and methodically go through the HEROES bill and say, okay, uh, the states need money. Let's lay out all 50 states, which states need money and which ones don't, right? Mm -hmm. So like there's a big difference between Utah and Michigan. There's a huge difference between Utah and Nevada, but they need to go state by state and see where money is really needed. Do they need to give money to the post office? Uh, maybe, but they could also raise the price of a stamp by 10 cents. And that would bring a huge amount of money into the post office without having to generate debt, right? So um, 
I, I think that a stimulus package is absolutely going to pass. And I'm just hoping and praying that the Senate will move sooner than later. Mm. I, I like your term there, cycle. Let's, let's cycle the money, okay? Because money's always moving. So yeah, that, that, was, that was a really good point there. Um, you already hit my, my next question. That was the, the plan for, for someone making more money when the re economy reopens. I already hit on that, so we'll pass on that one. So, all right, with the U.S. now approaching $28 trillion in debt, I mean, it, it's more than that, but um, what do you think this is going to mean for our kids and our grandkids? Uh, well, my, my biggest worry is the only way that the government brings in money is through taxation of its citizens. And we, we saw this after World War II when the top federal tax bracket rose to 94%. Now, granted, most of that was on the wealthy. So I, I think that uh, there is going to have to be a revamping of the tax system when it comes to businesses. There's going to have to make possibly be a revamping of the tax system when it comes to uh, citizens. Um, but it's a dangerous, so we're in a, we're in a dangerous uh, place right now where they, they don't want to go too far, but they need to go far enough. And that's where I'm hoping these, these economists will, will break down, okay, what do we really need to do to help the people and then get businesses making money again? If people can make money, they don't need to be on government assistance, right? right. And, right. and so, uh, but the, the big thing that I worry about is taking on too much debt, but not doing enough for the people. And then what does that mean for future taxes? Mm, mm, good, good. Okay. All right. So we see this increasing potential for, you know, the higher taxes down the road. So should most people also focus on minimizing their taxes now? And if so, what do they do? Uh, so uh, a big one is, uh, you know, I ask people if you could wake up in retirement with a million dollars tax free or a million dollars still owing 30, 40% tax, which would you choose? They 100% of the time say, I want to have tax free money. But when it comes to saving money, they're putting the majority of it in 401ks and IRAs, which must be taxed. Now, that's okay. People are trying to lower their taxes a little bit right now. What people don't know is what will their tax bracket be when they're older? So they, they may actually be, you know, saving a couple of dollars in tax today, but paying 10 or $20 in tax in the future. That's the thing that is we just don't know what those taxes will be. If it were up to me right now, I think you kill two birds with one stone. You get rid of your 401k or maybe you dial it back to just the match, even though I think most companies are going to stop matching for at least a couple of years, right? But if you dial that back, two things happen. Number one, you get way more money flowing to your family every single month, which people need right now. And number two, you, you pay the tax now and you don't have to pay it in the future. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that the IRAs and 401ks seriously need to be uh, re-evaluated uh, of how much of your future retirement should be in something that must be taxed down the road. Mm, yeah, good, real good. Yeah, because like you said, I mean, it's been up to 94%. We see things as high as 50, 70%. I mean, I, I, would we be surprised if it goes to that in the next few years? Uh, well, uh, uh, the government knows that they have to deal with taxes um, in, in steps, right? So if they just raised it right now, the, the people would rebel and go crazy, right? So they're going to have to find ways to do that, but they're also going to have to maybe cut some of their budgets. And I don't know where they need to cut. That's not my job. But um, the, 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 the spending is very, very high for how much tax is actually coming in. And right now we're moving towards a trillion dollar annual deficit. And that's not good on top of potentially releasing six trillion dollars in one calendar year mm, mm, crazy it's just crazy so hey qu question i like to ask clients is do you love your family or uncle sam more <laughs> <laughs> my family <laughs> i would say my family well and, and the reason i ask that is because you know the way we're taught to prepare for retirement just the way you, you describe you know, leaves Uncle Sam and the IRS with more money than our family members. You want to touch on that? Uh, yeah, think about this. When you say the IRS, if you write it out, it's T-H-E-I-R-S, theirs. 
It's their money. They want it, right? Uh, Uncle Sam will not let you out of this world without taking their bite of your apple unless you grow your money inside of programs where the, the, the uh, government or IRS has already approved not having to pay tax if you go down a certain rabbit hole, right? So, um, yeah, I think people just need to be conscious of that. Um, you know, the, the wealthy get ripped on a lot for being smart uh, when it comes to finding ways to legally avoid taxes. But most of those programs are available to the, the middle class and, and even those below that. Um, so, again, are, are we saving a few dollars in tax now to pay 10 or $20 in tax down the road? That's where I think people do need to be conscious of what, what is your future tax bill going to look like? Mm. Yeah. Whether you'd rather be taxed on the seed or taxed on the harvest, right? So Yeah. Oh, no, that's a great example, right? Like we're just getting the garden going in, right? I put in one tomato seed and that may grow a hundred tomatoes that has uh, 300 seeds inside. So do I want to pay tax on the one seed now or the 300 seeds later? That, that's a great example. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. So which is more important, the amount of money that people make or the amount of money that they keep? Oh, good question. Um, both. Uh, but it, it, it's more important what you keep. It's absolutely more important what you keep. But you shouldn't be uh, not trying to increase your income, right? And, and so people that come out of this, there, there's going to be, I believe, millions of jobs that may be in different industries, but will pay higher. And people should pursue those opportunities. People should pursue making more money. Um, I, I think that that's a given. But yeah, it, it is more important what you, what you keep uh, than, than what you make. Because I, I know people that make 50 grand a year and can save $5,000. And I know people that make $120,000 a year and can't pay their bills right? So which yep. one would you rather be? <laughs> yep. 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 Good. All right. So as we wrap this up, are there any financial tools that, that you think people should avoid in the new economy? Uh, well, uh, CDs and bank products are going to be very low. Um, if somebody wants something short, I, I have access to some programs around three, three year time frame that are paying significantly higher uh, than a bank. Um, I think people, again, need to reevaluate their understanding and their use of IRAs and 401ks. Um, people definitely need to decide how much of my portfolio should be in the stock market. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I know clients that the money they didn't move over with, with my group, you know, they took a 30, 40, 50, 60 percent hit on their money. And now we don't know how long that will take back. You know, they told us it's going to be a V and come right back. And now they're saying, no, it's going to be a long, long process to get back to break even. So those are a few things that I think people are going to seriously have to reevaluate. Mm -hmm. Good. And according to the U.S. inflation calculator, you know, over the last hundred years, we've been averaging about 3.2% in inflation. And now we've got over 2.2%. 1%, I think, over the last 20 years. I mean, how is inflation going to be added to this whole equation? Yeah, the one thing the government does try to do is they do try to keep that inflation around 2 to 3%. Um, I, you know, with the amount of money they're printing, I'm, I'm hoping and praying we don't hit hyperinflation where everything just becomes so expensive because there's so much money floating around uh, in the system, but nobody really has access to it, right? Um, but uh, right now, we're seeing a spike in groceries, we're seeing a spike in uh, ser services and goods, but I, I believe as supply comes back into its proper ratio, that, that we'll see that hopefully come back down. Um, the, the, the one good thing for most of us, but not for people in the oil industry, is with the oil market crashing, at least that, at least, you know, the price of, gallon, uh, of a gallon of gas didn't go to four fifty or $5. I remember after the Great Recession, uh, paying almost $5.50 to fill up in, uh, on a vacation in California. Mm. And so because the gas prices are low, that helps with moving food, moving cars, goods and services, clothing, all kinds of supplies. Uh, that will help keep that down. But I'm hoping, you know, right, right now, a snake has swallowed a deer and it's just kind of got to move through the system. 
but then hopefully it will flatten back out at that two to 3% inflation rate. Mm -hmm. good, good analogy there too, okay. All right, so when it comes to the future of America, are you optimistic or pep pessimistic? Oh, I'm always, I'm always optimistic when it comes to America. I do worry about the, the rest of the globe, but uh, America is an engine that knows how to move. And uh, we just need to, what, what's happened is they've got this great car and uh, they're wondering, they're sitting around debating whether to put gas in it, right? Stimulus money. You know, should we gas this car up and, and really get it going again? And it's kind of stupid the way that they're behaving. But if, if they can get that fuel in there, this, this car will fire again. And America, I believe, will get going again. So I'm, I'm pro-America and I'm optimistic. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Hey, we're, we're, we're done. So any All last right. words you, you want to share with our listeners? Oh, no, just that, you know, I hope uh, everybody will keep their heads up and keep going. I know that this has been hard and uh, I'm just hoping and praying for the uh, American people. But I do think people need to sit down and reevaluate how they're going to make money, how they're going to save money, how they're going to protect and grow money going forward. Uh, so, you know, if I can be a part of helping anybody, let me know. But I think that those are the four things that people are going to have to look at. Mm, excellent. Excellent. All right. So if you want to get hold of Stephen for any kind of financial coaching or, or money, men, uh, excuse me, money mentoring, you can reach him at yourbridgeplan.com. That's yourbridgeplan.com. And if you have any questions about taxes or you want to find out how I'm handling things on this side here, you can go to redwoodtaxsaves.com. That's redwoodtaxsaves.com. Steven, it's been great. Man, we've had a great time today. I've enjoyed every moment of this. And uh, thanks again for, for taking the time to share this with my listeners. Yes, and, and thank you for helping the business owner clients I've sent your way. I know that you were able to help save them even more taxes. So thank you for the opportunity to be on. Excellent. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah.